We're gathered today for a possibly historical day since the Mona Lisa will be decoded. Perhaps our most famous painting and certainly the most famous smile in our history. I must say that this is the super short version and everything I'll say has a lot more depth in the book. Also, be prepared for the unexpected because the Mona Lisa code is quite unexpected. The first and most popular enigma of the Mona Lisa is to find out who she depicts. Who is the Mona Lisa? The historians believe that she is Lisa Gerardini, Giocondo's wife, as they discovered centuries later. Some conspirators claim that this is Leonardo da Vinci himself, and some claim that this is his lover and model Salai. None of them are right, and one of them is out of the question, as we'll see later on. Let me add that the secret of secrets of the revelation of Mona Lisa has remained hidden for more than 4,000 years because I found it in the pharaohs, in Christianity, and in ancient Greece. As Leonardo da Vinci writes, and so may please our great author, that I may demonstrate the nature of man and his customs in the way I describe his figure. Therefore, we should focus on the figures of his portraits in order to find the nature of man. He clearly writes his key down, as we'll see later on, so that no one may doubt the intentions of the unprecedented Leonardo da Vinci, who even considers their writer. There includes his loved one, Salai. He also gave to Salai the Mona Lisa painting, which was never delivered to Lisa Gerardini, as well as other paintings of his, with the funny thing being that Leonardo, in his will, calls Salai his servant. And from these kinds of contrast, you always have something to learn. Leonardo's name is also a mystery since he signs himself either as Leonardo or Leonardo. Why? Did he deliberately confuse the historians? In his manuscripts though, he almost always wrote Leonardo. We now see Leonardo's signature on the Vitruvian man, which is Leonardo and not Leonardo, as we currently believe. Leonardo's prefabricated enigmas began intentionally with the Leonardo or Leonardo. The third clue that I believed it would help me to decode the Mona Lisa was when I saw Salai's version of the Mona Lisa. It's not the Gioconda, it's the painting next to her, the Mona Vanya by Salai or the naked Mona Lisa, Salai's self-portrait, because it's very possible that his love would know Leonardo's big secret as his loved one. Comparing the two paintings, one can see that they have the same smile, the same position, and are in the same perspective, with the difference being that Salai is both male and female, and that he's naked in a freezing environment. That's why the mountains behind him are frozen, whereas in the Mona Lisa, the background is warm, like in spring or autumn. The fact that in his naked Mona Lisa, Salai painted his face in the place of Mona Lisa's face raises the question of why did Leonardo hide his incomparably beautiful youthful face according to the historians of his time and especially during an era which glorified beauty. Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa does look like a woman and a man. On one side her hair is here curly while on the other side it's obviously straighter, more wavy than curly. Mona Lisa famous smile now reveals an irony as if she's ready to tell us the whole truth and then burst into laughter. And we can see that because her right cheek is sulking slightly. One may see that she's sulking from her right cheek. This one compared to this one. Let's focus now on Mona Lisa's eyes and gaze. If you observe her pupils separately, they're both looking at a different point. Her right pupil has a direction like this and her left one is actually looking at you. It's directed towards you. As with her eyes, in the Mona Lisa famous smile, the right side of her lips is straight and serious, and we can see here where that stops, while the left side is obviously smiling. I think that we can see that there are two different smiles. Therefore, Leonardo painted the portrait of a woman who has two different and interconnected shining gazes and two different interconnected and expressive sides to her lips which smile but also holding something back. What is though Mona Lisa's personality? Because it can't be a coincidence that we singled out the Mona Lisa specifically. Right after that, it came as an inspiration to me to listen to my little inner voice telling me to split the Mona Lisa into half vertically and compare her two sides to see if her face is symmetrical. As we can obviously see, her face isn't symmetrical. No analogies there. And now we have the first decoding of the Mona Lisa. Because the amazing evidence comes from my memory and from comparing the left half face of Salai's Mona Vanya with the left half face of Leonardo's Mona Lisa. The resemblance of the features is too impressive to be a coincidence. 
the lip has exactly the same curve and ending, the fleshy cheek, the reddish cheeks, the exact same playful look, and the salai smile found in most of his portraits. Therefore, we've just solved Mona Lisa's left half face, it's Salai's left half face. But of course, why would Leonardo be an exception and not express his love for his muse and beloved Salai in his favorite masterpiece? Now we know why Leonardo never parted from the Mona Lisa so as to always have his beloved close to him. So we have answered one half of Mona Lisa's identity. The one side is Leonardo's favorite friend, pupil and lover of almost 30 years, Salai. If Mona Lisa's one half is Salai, then who did Leonardo choose to unite him with in his favorite work? Because the more you observe the two halves of the Mona Lisa's face, the more they differentiate from each other. They look as if they have two connecting but different personalities, two different people. The left cheek is rounded, while the right with the same skin is tighter and slightly sucked in. The left half looks ambitious and smiling, while the right one is calm and a bit detached, as if each one of them has its own ambitions, thoughts and dreams. The differences between the two half faces are easier to observe if you hide the one side with your palm, meaning that even though I have them already separated, you can place your palm on your one eye and see the one half and then place it on the other eye and see the other different half face. Everything we observe in Leonardo's work is a result of deep contemplation and little or nothing is coincidental. So, the Mona Lisa is two different half faces united into one. The Mona Lisa's first key. And if the one half is Salai, the other half can't be anyone else but Leonardo himself. Because it's almost impossible that he would have matched his lover with anyone else but himself. Looking for evidence to this theory of decoding the Mona Lisa, you realize how organized and what a genius Leonardo was since, in order to overcome any doubt of whether they are the Mona Lisa, he named her Lisa. And if we follow the logic of the decoding and divide her name in half, we clearly find the first proof of the decoding since she's named Lisa, the first two letters of the name of Leonardo and Salai, just like in the painting, meaning that he divided and united their faces as well as their names into one, and they call her Mona Lisa. Unbelievable! The Mona Lisa truly has hidden secrets. Leonardo being the Mona Lisa's right half face, also explains why he hid his beautiful face and why he confused the historians with Leonardo or Leonardo. To be able, at least to his art, to share his love with his other half freely and forever. To avoid further doubts, because Leonardo left all the proofs, here is a quote by Leonardo where he states his code clearly. Don't reveal, if you love freedom, that my face is the prison of love. His face is the prison of love between him and Salai. Don't reveal it because their freedom is at stake in those times of the Holy Inquisition which outlawed erotic relationships between two males. How poetic are Leonardo's thoughts? Love forever, even if they lose their freedom. These are the moments where you wonder how many times he hid and glorified their errors. How many times did he free them from the prison of love? Mona Lisa's code truly opens a portal to the rest of Maestro Leonardo works. Therefore, in the John the Baptist painting, we may all have seen just Salai, but the truth is that his face is split and united just like in the Mona Lisa. The two of them, together, forever. The left side is certainly Salai, and the right one can't be anyone else but the young and very handsome Leonardo, connected now also in age, thanks to Leonardo's magic, as if they are the same age, just to see how they would look together if they didn't have a 28 years age difference. To see their different faces clearer, here is Salai, which is well known, and here is, I think, Leonardo's best self-portrait, where we can finally see his real face, and by his own hand, and when he was young, without a beard. Because I believe that Leonardo had a beard in real life, so he painted himself without his beard so that no one could identify him in his paintings. This is the first time that we see what Leonardo really looked like and in my opinion he truly is very handsome. He cares yet has the curiosity to be playful with us and enjoy himself while expressing the erotic relationship. For the Salvadore Monti painting, the art critics have already agreed that the one half face was painted by Leonardo and the other half face by one of his pupils. 
Which phases though did he depict before he met Salai and which afterwards? In what other ways did he add their faces and his own? In the novel, you will also find three more self-portraits of Leonardo da Vinci, also three secret figures in the Mona Lisa and the way they in love Leonardo figured out how to have his eyes forever on Salai. It's the three-dimensional Mona Lisa by the hand of the unique Leonardo da Vinci. And now, the second level of the decoding of the Mona Lisa. Was Leonardo looking for the best way to hide their love only? Or did he hide something else much more fundamental, which is related to human anatomy? What more did Leonardo know for their unification to appear so natural? My inner voice answered at the right question once more. Two natures. I'd never heard before of two natures and it's impossible to think by myself of something that I had no clue what it meant. The first rational thought was to look for precedents on portraits with two different half faces. Research showed one very big precedent. As I explained before, you can hide the one side with your palm and then the other side to clearly see that there are two different half faces. The most interesting thing about this portrait of Christ the Almighty is that it truly represents the two natures of Christ, the human and the divine. That's why it's split into two obviously different half faces. Certainly though, my inner voice answered the question I didn't know for the second time. Does my inner voice have its own independent knowledge? The second level of decoding the Mona Lisa is about a personal balance, which we can even see in our faces, as we'll see later on. Because Leonardo said, that he may demonstrate the nature of man in the way he describes his figure. And about his figure, he writes that the shape of bodies is divided into two parts. Here is another proof of Leonardo's code. And when Leonardo depicts the anatomy of the human skull, he also splits it into half, and both of its sides are clearly of a different type, just like in the Mona Lisa. The decoding of the Mona Lisa was always right in front of us. It's very obvious. This is the Mona Lisa's decoding. And to get deeper into the second level, do we all have two half faces united just like the Mona Lisa? And is that why their matching up looks so natural? The Leonardo da Vinci code. With one hand, you hide each half of your face and then compare the two halves with each other. Then you realize that what works in the Mona Lisa also works for us. We all have two different half faces so perfectly matched that not even you the owner have noticed it. We can prove the above statement in a mirror right now, but it is also true of the faces of famous people. For example, JFK's face. His right side is the famous one, while his left half face is the little unknown one. This means that if somebody showed us his left half face and asked us to identify him, I don't think that anyone would recognize him as JFK. Therefore, according to what we observe in ourselves, our faces definitely have two half faces, which aren't copies of the same face, and even if they match perfectly, it's as if each of them could have belonged to a different person. Two different half faces and two different personalities. The perfect combination of our two faces and personalities into a third one, our full face and our total personality. As we observed in the Mona Lisa, Leonardo's have as one personality, Salai's have has a second personality, and the third one is also different from both of them. The Mona Lisa. The second level of decoding the Mona Lisa is that whatever works in the Mona Lisa also works in us. We all have three natures. Two other half natures and personalities, and a third nature and personality, which combines us and decides for the three of us. How perfectly does nature combine our three natures? Let's observe the three natures of Albert Einstein and how we can simultaneously smile and be serious. On his right side, we can see a subtle smile, as if he's ready to crack a joke, and on the other side, he's very serious. If our face is split in two halves, then logically, our whole body is split in two halves, as we may observe in our mirror. Because it's not only our face split in two, we're split into two from top to bottom. Our division is not a copy of each other, it's asymmetrically beautiful and naturally matching. As we can observe from the picture, the two halves of the body are of a different body type, looking like they could have belonged to a different guy. The left one is harder stone, the right one has more meat, the nipples are at a different height, and the abdominals naturally create different shapes 
even though they belong to the same slim person. Our one nature is the left one, our second nature is the right one, and the third one is the total of them both. The one who combines all three of us. The one that is now listening and considering the revelation of Mona Lisa. Going further, according to the sciences of the 21st century, we're split into two halves throughout our creation, as occurs in our cells, chromosomes and DNA. Even if we believe today that the cells are clones of each other, the truth we have just found out is that they contain two different half cells, as it's clearly shown in the picture, which showcases the differences exactly at the moment of their asymmetrical division. Meaning that today the scientists claim that these two are clones of each other, whereas in the picture we can clearly see that they're not. Our three natures is also the reason why some people's eyes are cross-eyed, which we couldn't understand how up to now. It's also the reason why we have two brain hemispheres, as we can see in the picture of them, whereas up to now we didn't know why we didn't have just one brain, which seemed to us much more rational. The most important thing is that you cannot ignore the new anatomical facts that I've just showed you, because we can now even see our other half self with our eyes and our microscopes. The goal is to fully understand them. Logically, the same way we're split externally is the same way we're split internally. And all of the above means that we're not alone. We have two different selves to satisfy. Another proof is that we can't have internal conflicts if we're just one personality. Otherwise, who are we fighting with internally? The expressions that we have already accepted concerning our second hidden voice are countless, such as an inner voice told me, I'm making amends with myself, to which other self are we referring? Logically, to our second self, who has its own mind and personality, which we're called biologically to bring to the surface and thus harmonize our two selves, so as not to be unbalanced. Which means that, according to all the above, all beings have two other half-personalities and the third one which combines them. The two halves do the talking, the third one decides. All this is explained in the novel thoroughly. Therefore, our three natures may also be the foundation stone of psychology in order to become a science, since this is the first time that we learned any natural law or rule about our inner world. Meaning that the anatomy of the Mona Lisa is exactly like our inner world. We couldn't have two different half-faces, but just one personality. It's obviously a division which occurs from the beginning of our creation to its end, and that's why we can see it even in our faces. The psychologists are from now on called to awaken the now de facto second and hidden voice inside us and adjust them to our three natures in order to cure the client's souls or even their own. The best of news is that we're all born from a very selective nature which matches the two other halves, mother and father, ovum and sperm, from hundreds of millions of possible other halves inside the uterus in order to find those that match naturally. The incompatible don't get born. Therefore, we're all born with two naturally matching faces, brains, personalities, and twice the strength, the wants, the rights, the obligations, and the dreams. It also means that we're all living in a matching world where everyone is born to learn how two different sides can cooperate from within. Meaning that the nature of all beings is to learn how to cooperate. What a relief! The more you learn about nature, the more you love nature. How though all of the above benefit our everyday lives in our everlasting quest to achieve our internal balance as well as in our interpersonal relationships and even our social balance? How does Leonardo's code give birth to another 45 original theories while it is simultaneously a logical path in order to end your internal conflicts or even to enlighten you? What is the system of natural balance and what are the workings and the philosophy of tri-fair demosophy? Demosophy is a new democratic political system which derives from the Mona Lisa's code with its central motto being everybody and nobody has the power. It's a way to serve the power based on the way that nature serves its power. All this is written in a book. I can't say everything today. The funniest thing about demosophy is that it'd be very funny if many people like this new democratic system and the federal political system once more originated from a Greek. What to watch out for during your coming of age? What is the nature of humans? It's the fourth level of the decoding of the Mona Lisa and I'm keeping it a secret so you can enjoy it by reading it in the novel if, of course, you're interested. 
the historical and fictional novel based on 4,500 manuscripts by Da Vinci with 165 original theories and 350 explained paintings and drawings as part of the plot, the coming of age and the enlightenment of its heroes is split into three very decisive eras, the Renaissance, the 1800s and today. All of them are seekers of the truth and the one advances to the next one like a relay race of knowledge. The 29 years old Gilles insensitive Nicholas discovers in Florence in the 1800s the secret and lost manuscript of Leonardo da Vinci's last pupil and heir, resulting in his decoding the world first and then the famous Mona Lisa, experiencing Leonardo's teachings as part of his adventurous life in between Florence and New York in the 1800s. The conclusion is that we're three-dimensional from top to bottom and inside out. Also, the revolution of the Gilles has just begun. The end of all dark ages. Now we can all become enlightened. Thank you very much for listening. ανάμεσα σε όλα τα υπόλοιπα και που έχει σπουδασία έξω και που έχει δει πολλά πράγματα και εδώ και στην Ελλάδα και στο εξωτερικό ήταν αυτό που τον κέντρισε πιο πολύ στη Μόνα Λίζα για να ασχοληθεί μαζί του. Η πραγματικότητα είναι ότι τον κέντρισε τη Μόνα Λίζα μέσα σε περίπου πέντε ώρες και είναι ένα ένιγμα που δεν το είχε αποκοπήσει κανείς πεντακόσια χρόνια. Ήρθε η μικρή μου φωνή μου, είπε κοίταξε τη Μόνα Λίζα, χώρισε έτσι στη μέση, δέσα είναι συμμετρική και όπω. Έκανα αυτό και ταυτόχρονα διάβαζα για τον Λεωμάρντο, είδα του Σαλάι, είδα τη φωτογραφία τη Μόνα Βάνια. Δηλαδή από ένα το ξεκίνησε. Κατευθείαν μετά βρήκα ότι τα δύο έτερα είναι μισή πρόσωπα, είναι η ίδια τη Μόνα Βάνια και τη Μόνα Λίσα. Ε, και μετά μου φάνηκε πεντακάθαρο ότι ε, μισό πρόσωπο, άλλο μισό πρόσωπο. Άρα δύο πρόσωπα. Ποιο ο Λεωμάρντο, γιατί ο Λεωμάρντο, τι λένε Μόνα Λίσα. Οπότε το λένε εύκολα. Αλλά η αρχή ήταν οπωσδήποτε ιστορική φωνή και. Μοιραίο, καρμικό, δεν νομίζω ότι μπορεί να είναι τυχαίο κάποιο να έχει αποκτοποιήσει ένα έννοιγμα που είναι τόσο δημοφιλέ. Αυτό και να έχει αποκαλύψει την τύχη. Δεν νομίζω ότι γίνεται αυτό το πράγμα. Οπότε εγώ το θεωρώ τελείω καρμικό. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. <laughs> Thank you.